This vault will only open when you do 10 push-ups in front of it. But before it opens, let me show you how I made it. I really like candy. And that's a problem. Because I don't think I'm able to keep candy in my house for more than a couple of days. So I'm in dire need of a solution that will help me to eat less candy. Instead of teaching myself some discipline, I thought it would be way easier to have a device that helps me eat less candy. I came up with the idea to create a vault that looks around in the room and checks if someone is doing push-ups. If they are doing push-ups and they did enough push-ups, it will open and the candy will fall out. To realize this, the first thing we need to do is try and recognize a push-up. We can do this using a library from Google called MediaPipe. This library makes it easy to detect joints on the body. However, with joint detection, we are only halfway. We still need to detect the push-up. After some research, I found out that the simplest way is to detect the angle between different joints. Before we can calculate the angle, we need to select the right joints. We are going to use the media pipe function, which will extract the landmark. So we get the shoulder, elbow, uh, wrist, and uh, ankle foot uh, coordinates and uh, all of these coordinates we're going to then use to calculate the angle. When the angle between the shoulder, elbow and the wrist is around 90 degrees, it means we're in the lower push-up state, which looks like this in code. When the angle on the shoulder, elbow and wrist are around 180 degrees, it means we're in the upper state of the push-up position. In code, we can first check if the lower state is reached, and after that, if the upper state is reached, we can count it as one push-up. This worked out quite reliably. Everything you see here is open source. You can download it in the video description. Let's go on to the more fun stuff, building the case. What I have here is a mini vault and it's really awesome. I found the file online and I went to a local fabrication lab to use the laser cutter and cut it all out. All of these parts are put together without any glue. So that's really awesome that you can do that. It's not perfect though, because uh, I need some things like, for example, I want to put a servo here so I can automatically close and open the vault. And I should also want to put a nice display and a reset button. And unfortunately, this thing is just, it's just way too small uh, for what I want. I'm gonna pick some of the uh, good parts of this design, but basically I need to redo the whole thing so it fits all of my needs. But uh, yeah, back to the drawing board. When I finished the drawings, I checked if they would fit by putting them together in a 3D program. Now I was ready for the real deal and went to the local makerspace in Rotterdam where I could use the laser cutter. This process took quite a while, but all of the parts came out flawlessly. Now it's time to put everything together. Hey kid! Never let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you can get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test if only I could go back in time, I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright. The vault door mechanics look quite complex. I designed it in a way so that it not only locks the vault, but you can also see the valve in front of the vault door moving at the same time. To start testing if everything works, I had to get the electronics in place. I hooked up a display, the Raspberry Pi camera and button, which will act as a reset button for the fault, so I can easily close it. After I connected everything, I ran the code and yay, it moved. 
uh, only I found out that it didn't run that smooth. I tried to burn some candle wax and like smear it uh, everywhere. <laughs> Which sounds strange, but it actually uh, made it a lot better. Then I proceeded with gluing some things in place. This wasn't per se necessary, but it did make things go a bit smoother because sometimes it would fall apart when, when you were fiddling with it. The last step was to put all of the electronics inside of the vault and then close it up. Here I was looking what would be the best fit for our hinges. When I was making the design, I thought a toothpick would be the best fit, but it turned out I had some curtain hangers, which were actually the perfect size and also maybe a bit more sturdy. Woo, here it is, all assembled. And it's beautiful, isn't it? I made a couple of changes to it. As you can see, uh, there's like a hole at the top now and you can remove it. And as you can see, I added a power bank to it, so it doesn't need a wire anymore, which is like really nice. With these changes in place, I was ready to test the vault. Unfortunately, it didn't go so well. The vault had a lot of difficulties detecting my push-up. After doing a lot of push-ups, uh, I was like, yeah, this is not the result that I want. So I had to check and see if I could do a fix because a slow push-up is probably better for your body, but it's definitely not the result that I want. To fix the lag in the push-ups, I noticed something in the software. The Raspberry Pi was trying to detect all of the joint positions 60 frames per second, which is a lot. So I changed this to a lower frame rate, like three frames per second. And that gave the Raspberry Pi enough time to process it and made the detection so much more smoother. I also made a mobile app. So here you can actually see what the vault is seeing. This app also has the features to either open or close the vault. So that's really awesome, right? Of course I needed some candy to fill up the vault. So I went to the local supermarket and bought a lot of candy. After I put everything into the vault, there was still something missing, which of course was a beautiful sign. Before trying it out in the real world, I went to my office and tested it with my colleagues. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eight. This worked great. So I was feeling confident enough to go out in the public and see what others think. I'm currently at the central station and I'm going to ask a couple of people if they want to do uh, some push-ups for free candy. So our setup is over there and uh, yeah, let's see who's interested. Guys, are you interested in earning some free candy? Teen push-ups? Oh. You can do it? Okay, okay, let's go. Yes. Let me, let me reset it. Oh, okay. it's like <laughs> only 10 push-ups, right? Only 10, only 10. <laughs> nice, 3, 4, Verder naar beneden nog. Je kan het, je kan het. Nog eentje. Ja. Kijk, en dan gaat de kluis open. Je hebt hem open. Hier, je mag een uh, Oh, je mag ook voor je zo'n change.
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, let's go! Hij is open, hij heeft alles te detect. Oh, <laughs> ja, je mag ook gewoon zien in papa. Ja, ja, ja tuurlijk. Alright, that's it. I'm super happy with the results. A lot of people came up to me, asked me how it worked, and it's just great. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, so... It took a lot of time and energy for me to finish this project, but in the end, it was super worth it. If you're interested in this project, feel free to try it out yourself. I put a link to the code and the design in the video description. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment on the video, and see you next time. Oh, uh, yeah, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine ten. Let's go. You did it. You yeah, opened yeah. the ball there once and he just keeps going. Go, go. <laughs> Dude, that's so good.